Hello world, here's a question. How many times has this happened to you? You create a beautiful front end that's the best thing since sliced bread, it's so beautiful. It organizes all of your reports in the most elegant way possible, has all the shiny bits and bobs that make clients go weak at the knees, it passes review, and everybody's happy. They throw a parade in your honor, and you all but know you're getting that shiny corner office with the hot red convertible. <laughs> it gets pushed to production, takes one look at live data, and then... Oh dear. Now the client is not happy, the users are bringing out their pitchforks and your boss is getting ready to toss you out of a window because of the Brobdingnagian monstrosity you just unleashed on the world. Can you say it again for me? Brobdingnagian. One more time? Brobdingnagian. You take a closer look and realize your UI is fine for small datasets. On large datasets, eh, things get wonky. It gets even worse when you realize that the API you're using was made by two guys smashing rocks together in a cave somewhere and doesn't support pagination. Neither do you have the time, access, or ability to fix this on the back end. But you need to solve this issue and you need to solve it now. What do you do? Well, before you consider faking your own death and moving to Mexico, here are a few things you can try. My name is Michael, this is a Teapot Tech Talk, and here are six ways you can deal with large datasets on front end. Let's get on with it. The first thing you have to realize is that the size of the data isn't usually your biggest problem. Computers have come a long way from the days where you needed a whole building to calculate 1 plus 1. The average smart fridge has more computational power than the computer that placed man on the moon. So it's pretty clear that they can handle some pretty large files. What will hurt you though is the transfer speeds and writing all those pretty elements to the DOM. So tip number one, caching. If a user has to wait 20 seconds when they get to your UI, they accidentally click refresh and then they have to wait another 20 seconds, they will not be happy. But here's the thing, they don't actually have to wait that second time. If your data isn't changing every second, then there's really no reason to reload all that data again at every refresh. Caching data is a process that stores multiple copies of data or files in a temporary storage location, the cache, so that they can be accessed faster. And wouldn't you know it, browsers allow you to cache data. Normally the browser will handle most of this for you as long as the API specifies cache control. But even if it doesn't, browsers are smart enough to do it anyway. But if they don't, for whatever reason, you can do it yourself. If the data changes every now and then, caching still works for you. You can initially load your page with the cache data and then in the background, get new data and update your cache. The user will be none the wiser and their impression of the system will be vastly different. Tip number two, lazy loading. Lazy loading or asynchronous loading is when you wait to load resources until they are needed. It's the IT equivalent of restaurants sending out the starter while they are still busy making the main course. If you're working with multiple calls and some of those calls aren't needed to get the user working initially, delay calling those endpoints. Focus on getting the user interactive first, then load the rest in the background when it's clear they're needed. This is a common trick used with images where images further down the page and not visible to the user initially are not loaded until the user starts scrolling towards them. Tip number three, optimize your data. Just because the API sent you all the data it has doesn't mean you all of it is relevant to the user. If the API gives you data separated into seven categories and your user only cares about three of them, showing the other four is a waste of time and resources. Filter these results out, don't even write them to the DOM, it will make your app more responsive. Be sure, however, to leave a way for users to access these hidden records, because nothing is more irritating to users than knowing that data exists, but they have no way of accessing it. Tip number four. Use pagination. Yes, yes, I know I said the API doesn't support pagination because cavemen, but that only applies to server-side pagination. If you already got the data onto the browser in a timely manner, writing those hundreds of thousands of records to the DOM will still take forever and your experience will still be bad. So don't write everything. Front-end only pagination is a thing and it's pretty easy to set up. You only need to calculate the number of pages your data will be displayed over and for each page displayed a subset of the data. Honestly, it's so simple. Here's a look at the code that you will need to do to make this work and I barely put in any effort. This is so good that in some cases, it's even better than using server-side pagination since you don't have the extra latency of requesting data from the server. Tip number five. 
infinite scrolling. Just like how you can have front-end only pagination, you can also have front-end only infinite scrolling. Infinite scrolling is a slightly fluid way of doing pagination. What happens is that you initially display a few results and as the user scrolls to the end of the list or table, you add more results. Unlike pagination, the user does not have to explicitly select a page number to go to it and it feels more user-friendly. The downside is that if you have things like links or contact details at the bottom of the page, the user will not be able to see them until all the records have been displayed. Another downside is that once elements are written to the DOM, they will stay there for the lifetime of the page, and if that page gets large enough, performance will degrade. Tip number six. Virtualization. Microsoft Excel has over a million rows and over 16,000 columns, but it doesn't show all of them on screen at the same time. Data virtualization or data windowing takes a page out of Excel's book and allows you to render only the data that is supposed to be visible to the DOM, rather than rendering the entire data set. It's basically the best parts of pagination and infinite scrolling rolled into one lovely package. It's a great technique to allow users to access large data in a way that's efficient and intuitive. They just have to scroll. The difference between infinite scrolling and data virtualization is that in data virtualization, once data is off the screen, it's removed from the DOM. So the size of the rendered elements remain constant. Implementing it well on front end is a bit of a nightmare, but luckily there are plugins for that. If you are in the React system, you can use plugins like React Virtualized or React Window. If you use Vue, you can use Vue Virtual Scroller or Vue Virtual Scroll Grid. The other frameworks all have plugins that do the same thing, so I won't list them here, but suffice to say, it's easy to look up and implement and your users will love it. And that's our list. The thing you have to remember is that the network and the DOM are two of your biggest issues. Solving things there goes a long way in solving your problems and getting that corner car smashed into an office. What are your favorite ways of handling large data on front end? Tell us about them in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. This video is based on an article I wrote, which you can check out on our website, jangsters.de. The links will be in the description. The front end is ever changing and new ways to handle problems are being developed fairly quickly. And when they are developed, we'll be here to update you on them. So make sure to like, share and subscribe to not miss out on our videos. Until next time, happy coding.